Hey everyone, and thanks for joining me today. My name is Dane Wofford, and I'm an application engineer at Capture 3D. Today, we are going to explain some of the most common alignment methods in the free Film Inspect software 2019. If you're new here, don't forget to click the subscribe button below for other 3D engineering technology tips and features delivered by our team. Because three-dimensional scan data is collected independent of any datum structure, all alignments are performed after the mesh has been created. This means that any conceivable alignment could be computed within the software if there is enough quality scan data on the alignment surfaces. Occasionally, other surfaces such as a fixture plate can also be referenced as a datum surface. The ability to toggle in and out of alignments provides a versatile platform to assess your own production process or simply to inspect any part. Having the ability to easily try different alignments allows you to quickly test and verify multiple possibilities regarding how to make adjustments and fix the problem. Today we have seven different alignment strategies we're going to show you. All right, let's get started with the software demonstration. For this short demonstration, we will be using the inspection workspace, which can be accessed through the drop down on the upper left portion of your screen, right below the file tab. We can pin or unpin the workspaces to the left of our screen. Today, we have an aerospace project to highlight our most common alignments. If we want to analyze a part without having any CAD, then we can create a 3 2, one alignment, which I will show you now. In the upper right portion of your screen, drop down the Create Alignment menu, choose 3 2, one and find the surfaces you want to square up in space. Choose three points for your primary datum, two points for your secondary datum, and one point for your tertiary datum. Hold control while left mouse clicking the desired points. Click OK to create this alignment. As you can see, by manipulating the coordinate cube at the bottom left of the 3D view, we have now squared up our mesh in space using the respective surfaces. At this point, you can construct your required features and begin inspecting this part as if it were the intended coordinate system. By clicking the F10 button, we can visualize the coordinate system as it lies on our mesh. By hitting F9, we can make the coordinate system disappear. To begin with our initial alignment, we have imported both our CAD and mesh, or our scan data, into the free Goman Spec software 2019. As we can see, these two elements have come in with different coordinate systems. This is natural. Whenever we create an alignment in the software, we are really moving everything else around so the mesh comes in alignment with the CAD, or our nominal data. With both parts imported in, we can now create our pre-alignment. 99% of the time, we begin our project with a pre-alignment. All other subsequent alignments will be initiated from this starting point. The pre-alignment is a global best fit between the CAD and the mesh that minimizes all deviations between both nominal and actual surfaces. If no datum structure exists for your part, the pre-alignment is a very nice place to start. If I need to choose a help point, Simply click on the CAD and click on the mesh 
in relatively the same area. This can assist in creating the pre-alignment for more symmetrical parts. Once we're done, hit OK and our pre-alignment has been created. In many cases, we want to align to mating surfaces to see how multiple parts may interact. These might not necessarily be your datum surfaces. We can use a local best fit alignment on the root area of this blade to highlight this process. I will go to the edit menu and find the plane based selection tool. This will allow us to select data on the mesh where we want to force our localized alignment. Clicking Ctrl plus R will bring back the most recently used selection tool. Now go to the Create Alignment dropdown, choose Local Best Fit, and hit OK. After this root-based alignment, we can now see how the upper portion of the blade is behaving as it would sit in the rotor assembly. Another very common alignment is the RPS alignment, which stands for Reference Point System. This alignment type will allow us to reduce the overall deviation of a discrete number of points, surface points, or other datum points. We have already constructed our six-point nest alignment points using touch points here. Now we can drop down our Create Alignment menu and open the RPS dialog. We will pull in our six points using the button at the bottom left of this window after we've highlighted the necessary points. We can see the software intuitively knows which direction each point should be constrained. The midpoint, for example, is best constrained in the XY plane. The Z point we should constrain in Z. In any of the alignment dialogs with a based on option, the selection here will dictate which alignment is our start point for the new alignment. Click OK to create this alignment. By giving each RPS point a DN check, we can see how the software minimizes the deviation of all points. Next, I want to show how to align 2D sections of this airfoil in a proper way. Imagine we want to analyze the cross section of this airfoil independent of its overall form. I will select the desired section, choose local best fit, and provide constraints. In Edit Global Constraints, I can define which degrees of freedom are allowed. I will allow X and Y translation and Z rotation. And this is relative to the alignment we're based on here, which is our pre-alignment. We can now move forward using the Airfoil package in the ATOS software.
The function profile form and position creates a similar alignment when checking the cross section. Next, I will demonstrate a datum system alignment. We can use several types of features to create a geometric elements alignment. We can use features like circles, cylinders, points, lines, planes, etc. Here we can construct features that will be referenced as our primary, secondary, and tertiary datums. Once I create three planes for my alignment and give the appropriate measuring principle, I can open the by geometric elements alignment. Now choose your primary, secondary, and tertiary features. The software automatically pulls in the correct actual element, but you can choose not to use these defaulted elements by choosing another option in the drop-down menu. If the software shows a warning and does not let you click OK, your features may not be constrained in all six degrees of freedom properly. Click OK to create this alignment. Lastly, I will show another local best fit alignment that combines our section and root alignments. This idea was inspired by a recent customer that uses a master part to calibrate the machine they check parts with. This alignment replicates a root fit in addition to a cross section fit using the convex side of the blade. Choose the correct actual data on the mesh to create our last local best fit. With this alignment, we've constrained the root as well as the upper portion of the blade. Now that we've done the work to create our alignment, let's look at a surface comparison to see the results. I'll choose Surface Comparison on CAD. I'll leave the defaulted parameters set here and click OK. I'm going to add a few deviation labels so we can get numerical values of the deviation between CAD and mesh. Here we can see the color map in the pre-aligned state. This is our datum system alignment. our master part alignment, our root fit alignment, our 2D section fit alignment, and our RPS alignment.
this short video helps shed some light on how and why we might choose specific alignment methods. There are of course some best practices for certain types of part, but ultimately the choice is up to you. A detailed drawing of the part should specify datum features or datum targets that are important for the production process, which can be used in the software to create fine alignments. If you like the material in this video, please hit the subscribe button below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.